Hey, guy from New Plastic, and today we'll be texturing and lighting the fellow kettle we modeled in the last video. We'll do Octane this time and Redshift next video. I'll be making all the materials procedurally, so we won't really be using the UVs we created last video, but it's always good to have good UVs, especially if you need to bake the materials for use in other programs or if you want to texture in Substance Painter or something like that. You can buy this model on the New Plastic Gumroad. It comes in all sorts of beautiful colors and two different versions of the kettle style. Very affordable great way to support the channel or check out prints and pins i made on the pink high gum road and consider supporting on patreon or membership where you can get these project files watch these videos with no ads get free products from the store and all sorts of cool perks but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all follow me on instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic join our discord subscribe listen to 100 gex let's go Change engine to octane, we'll do redshift in the next video, change to square ratio, turn on live view, and I have a path tracing preset, you can pause and look at the settings, adaptive settings turned on and pretty mid-level sampling, nothing fancy, ASUS is turned on and denoise are on. Let's add a cube quickly for a floor, and we can't see anything because we have no lights, so let's add a sky and add a quick HDRI just so we can see the materials. Okay, let's add a universal material, BRDF mode to GGX, make it very dark gray with a teeny tiny bit of blue in it, just to make it a bit richer. Plug a noise to the roughness channel. And actually, let's add this material to the kettle. So I'll be using selections to assign materials to different parts. So I'll make a selection of the main body part of the kettle, starting from this poly ring here, if I can manage to click it. Shift click on this ring as well and this thin one on the inner edge of the rim. Then fill selection everything in between and drag the material onto the selected polygons and it automatically creates a poly selection tag with the material assigned to that selection. Cool. Let's change the projection of this noise. Let's change the projection of this noise to XYZ to UVW so it'll kind of spread nicely around the object. Scale the noise down make it a bit more complex with the omega and up the gamma to get just a little bit of the white parts. And I want the noise to be super subtle cause we don't want it to feel dirty. We just want to break the unrealistically perfect surface. So I'll add a gradient and make the black some lighter gray and it's too shiny. So I'll make the gradient brighter. Yep. Let's up the IOR to 1.5. And yeah, you can see we're just adding very, very subtle roughness. This might even be too much, but we'll keep it. Duplicate this noise, plug to the bump channel, and let's scale it way up. Again, I just want to add a very, very subtle wobble to the surface. Nothing that you'll actually notice. Let's make the noise less detailed. And yeah, you can barely notice it. Mm, let's duplicate this noise. And actually, let's plug the projection node to it. And now we should scale it down a bit. Cool. Plug the projection to the third noise too, and let's plug this one to the bump as well and scale it way way down this noise should be like very very tiny and bring down gamma to increase the white areas it's way too strong now so let's add a gradient node and make the white like four percent so there is almost no contrast maybe a bit brighter cool scale it down even more yeah that's starting to look right let's try circular noise yeah that's cool the surface has this kind of a sandblasted texture, so that's what I'm trying to achieve. Let's um, mix these two noises using an add mix node. Yeah, I like it. And let's also plug the tiny noise into the specular channel using a gradient node. And we don't want to totally remove the specular from the crevices, just tone it down. So make the gradient blacks a light gray. Yeah, I like it. Maybe bring the specular gradient whites in a bit. Yeah, that's fine. We'll maybe adjust it further when we light up the scene. Let's tone down the large noise with the gradient node. Cool. Name this main black. Duplicate and name secondary black. And this will be used for the bottom part of the kettle. So let's invert the selection. Deselect the center part at the bottom. Deselect the inside of the kettle and deselect the inside of the spout, even though I forgot to do it here. Drag the new material onto the selection and let's edit it. 
Let's make the tiny bump noise barely visible. Disconnect the specular gradient. Make the albedo color less blue and a tiny bit darker. And make the roughness gradient a bit darker, so it's a bit more shiny. Mm, it seems a bit rough still. Let's make the tiny bump noise even smaller. Hmm, I think we're okay. We're gonna see it better once we light up the scene. Let's move on to the metal material. I'll select the inside of the kettle. And okay, cut. I've pasted in a few of my procedural metal and wood materials. You can buy them from my Gumroad store or check out my tutorials about them to learn how to make them yourself. Let's add the aluminum material to the inside. And we need to add a brush texture to it. We're gonna do it in a minute. Let's add the brass material to the bottom charging port part. These materials have subtle imperfections to them, but they're pretty clean, which is good for us since uh, this is a product shot. It needs to be pretty clean. Let's make the lid, add the main black material to it. Let's make a selection of this bottom area and add the aluminum material to it. And let's flip it so we can take a better look at the bottom. So we'll need to use an isotropy here, and there are several ways to do it. None of them are super realistic when you actually move around the object, but we'll do what we can. Let's, let's open the aluminum material, and a really important thing here is adding really thin directional noise to the bump channel. First, I'll change the noise projection to cylinder. I'll scale down the noise by a lot, and then only scale up the x-axis. So you can see the noise being stretched in this radial way on the top surface and in a linear way on the sides. Maybe scale it down a bit more, but you can see we're actually getting a nice anisotropic reflection. The problem is that the bump effect is way too strong. And if I tone down the noise, the bump looks better, but we're losing the anisotropic effect. So let's turn up the anisotropy to 0.9. And we're getting something, so if we just plug a 0.5 float into the rotation channel, we're getting this linear vertical stretch, which works for the sides, but not so much for the top. For the top, we'll need to add a gradient generator. Change its projection to cylinder as well, so you can see the gradient is wrapping around. Let's change the gradient repetition to 2, and repetition mode to mirror. So yeah, instead of this harsh cut, we're getting the smooth 360 gradient. And feel free to play with the gamma, but now we're getting a much more pronounced anisotropic reflection on the top. Let's add a gradient node to it and make the black dark gray and the white bright gray. And uh, maybe change the gamma to one. Yeah, that looks good. The problem is we lost the linear vertical reflections on the sides. So we'll need to mix these two together. I'll use a composite texture for it, and into the mask of the gradient layer, I'll use a falloff node set to normal versus vector 90 degrees. And you can see this falloff painted the flat parts of the mesh black and the vertical parts white. So we'll invert the minimum and maximum values because we need the top to be white. And now the float value is masked to the vertical parts and the gradient part is masked only to the horizontal flat parts. And we can increase the contrast on the mask if we need to, but now we're getting the right anisotropy for both top and side parts. One small problem we have is we see the seam of the bump noise. First, let's make this noise even smaller and more stretched. And let's duplicate it. And let's attach a different cylinder projection node to it. But if we rotate it 180 degrees around the y-axis, we're moving the seam to the other side. And we can plug the same transform node to it. Mm, maybe add some more detail to the noises and scale them up slightly. Now let's mix them with the mix node and use the gradient generator as a mix amount. And if I solo it, you can see we got rid of the seams because the white part of the gradient is hiding one seam and the blacks are hiding the other seam. Nice. Now we can mix all this with the original bump system, which I forgot to plug in. But yeah, now this will work on the inside parts as well. And what's cool is that it will automatically apply the different anisotropic effect to the flat parts and the vertical parts of the mesh. For the gasket, let's duplicate the second material and call it rubber. Increase the IOR on it. Make the roughness gradient brighter for more roughness. And let's squish this large noise and choke it to add these random subtle ridges across the gasket.
and darken their gradient to make them more subtle. Yeah, that looks cute, nothing fancy. Okay, for the lid handle, first let's grid fill this hole and bevel this edge. I don't know why I have to do it again. And I have this wood texture for my procedural wood pack. I could have added a bit more glossiness to it, but it looks great at the end. Same for the handle. Let's duplicate this secondary black material and make it much shinier for that base of the handle. Then use this iron material for my metal pack on the screws. Just leave as is. And the rubber material on the legs. Okay, let's slap the main black material on the bottom base and on the big button. Glossy black on the small button. Secondary black on the charging port. And let's select these rings here and apply a glossier black on them. Might be a bit too strong of a difference, but I kind of like it. Actually, let's duplicate the secondary black material and make a new material for this charging port. Scale down the large noise. Scale up and choke the tiny noise. Make it more detailed and really choke the whites. Up the gamma and the contrast. And really choke the whites by upping the gamma and the contrast. Okay, this large noise, let's darken it. Yeah, much more subtle. Make the roughness channel slightly less strong to get a tiny, tiny bit more shine. That seems fine. Let's add the red brass material from my metal pack on the metal piece. Nice, let's add a new universal material onto the glass panel. BRDF mode to GGX, albedo to black. Very, very tiny amount of roughness. IOR to 1.4, transmission to specular, and turn it all the way on. There's this rectangular black artifact here. I think it's because our ray epsilon is too high, so octane is kind of smushing between the glass and the bottom part. So let's bring the ray epsilon down. There you go, that solved it. Let's turn on fake shadows. It looks great, but certain areas have a bit too much glassy refractions vibes to them. Maybe if we add a random walk medium with no color, so it kind of adds this black tone to the glass. I mean, that looks kind of better, honestly. Maybe even reduce the radius. Yeah, I actually like this better than clear glass. Maybe brighten the charging port material a bit. Oh, and add this glossy black material to the base of the big button. Okay, let's start lighting the scene. I'll add a camera, focal length pretty long at 120 or so, usually it's more aesthetic for product shots. Let's zero the x-axis of the camera and the rotation, and maybe make the camera point slightly down at the product. I'll just round the edges of this floor cube, and I'll duplicate it and use it as a background wall as well. And let me give some color to the background. Just a very simple diffuse material. I want the light to feel very fine and subtle, not dramatic, not too fancy, something that will fit the sophisticated and delicate aesthetics of the kettle itself, kind of naturalistic. A lot of shots of this kettle have just natural lighting in a kitchen setting and it looks good. And we can just kind of end up using nothing but an HDRI for that. But I want something cleaner and more controlled without all the complex highlights and shadows of an HDRI. So let's turn the sky off and add an area light with a target tag on it and use the kettle as the target. So this will be our key light. Bring it somewhere here at a 45 degree angle and make it a bit narrower. Tone down the power and maybe make the temperature slightly warmer. That's already pretty cool. Let's duplicate it and place it above the kettle. Make it square ratio and maybe a disc shape. Let's actually convert it to an IES light and add a more focused IES spread. Maybe this three lobe one. Let's move this wall back so it won't be affected by this top light. And let's turn off the other light so we can see how the top light is behaving. So yeah, maybe place it slightly behind, a bit smaller, a bit stronger. Hmm. Oh, I like this highlight on the handle. Yeah, 
That's extremely subtle and pretty, and kind of helps gently separate the lid and handle from the background without being too dramatic. If you know me, you know I love me some heavy rim light action, but sometimes it gets boring and always ask yourself if it serves the vibe of the image. A strong rim light just doesn't feel right for me here. Okay, let's duplicate this light and make it way smaller. Remove the target tag and move it back so it lights up the background. It's so small so it barely has any effect, so let's turn off surface brightness. And yeah, there you go. I want to really make sure this light isn't lighting up the kettle, only the background, so I'll rotate and move it away from the kettle. And I want to give it some strong texture, so I'll add an image texture to the distribution and use a gobo. I'm using the Grayscale Gorilla gobos, but you can use your own images or a procedural noise texture like I showed in part 1 of my light series. That's pretty nice. Let's pull this light and wall more further back, maybe scale it down even more to make the texture more defined. Maybe there's a nicer framing I can find. Maybe a different gobo, this feels a bit boring. I like this window one, but maybe it's a bit too specific. Maybe this one. Yeah, I kind of like this. With this framing. Nice. I mean, this is great. Actually, there's one last thing I forgot to add the digital screen on the glass. Maybe we can do that real quick, but we'll need to extract the UV maps of the glass pane to know where to put the image. So I'll add a bake material tag to the glass object. Make sure to turn off subdivision surface, otherwise the baking won't work right. Give it a name, change resolution to let's do 4K. Then in options, check UV map. And if we preview, you can see the UV map here. So let's hit bake. Then I'll open the file it saved in Photoshop and I'll just quickly draw the digital screen right here. And of course you can also do it in After Effects and have an animated screen and use that. I'll save it and I'll add this file to an image texture to the glass albedo. And actually I'll add a texture emission and use it as the texture as well. Turn off surface brightness and turn the power way 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 down. Actually, the gray dots are too bright, so let's make them darker in Photoshop and reload the image. Still a bit too bright, huh? Let's lower the power even more, and maybe we don't even need it in the albedo channel. Yeah, this is much better. Look at this, I love it. Maybe make the background color a bit darker. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to go over post compositing, but it's very straightforward. Played with the contrast and exposure and simple stuff like that. Man, this was cool. A bit overwhelming, but again, after making all these speed art videos where I barely explain what I'm doing, it's actually cool to make something from start to finish, going through each process and actually showing you what I'm doing. Also, yeah, I realize how much I need to work on poly modeling because there's just so much to know when it comes to creating a really good topology. So I want to do more of these. Let me know if you care about these kind of videos of like hard surface modeling with uv unwrapping and lighting and all that next video i'll light up and texture the scene in redshift for all you redshift users out there and you can buy this model on my gumroad it comes in a variety of colors so check it out check out the prints and pins on my other gumroad and consider supporting on patreon where you can get this project file and a warm cup of coffee to all my stylish patrons and members you see on the screen right now i love you have a great day Peace.